Just a month after Great Britain got a new king, the world was treated with another glamorous and ultra-luxurious royal event. The royal wedding between Jordan's crown prince, Al Hussein bin Abdullah of Jordan, and Rajwa Al Saif was nothing short of an opulent display of wealth, class, and luxury. Let's see why the celebrations shook the world to its core. Who is Hussein bin Abdullah? Despite his relatively young age of 28 years, Prince Hussein bin Abdullah has more to put in his CV than you ever will. Probably the fact that he was born into royalty and today is the Crown Prince of Jordan helps a bit. But his direct lineage to the Prophet Muhammad is what will truly land him any job in the world. Not that he needs it. That's one of the many, many perks of being the son of the King of Jordan. No job interviews and a secure job as the ruler, or at least a high governmental position. His father, after all, is one of the most influential rulers in the Middle East. Furthermore, King Abdullah II is one of the world's wealthiest and most prominent kings, with an estimated net worth of over $750 million. Hussein's mother's background is equally impressive, as she was a highly educated woman before fleeing the Kuwait War in 1991 and meeting the king. Today, she's an all-inspiring advocate of health, community empowerment, youth, cross-cultural dialogue, microfinancing, and most of all, education. And when it comes to her precious Hussein, the mother couldn't be prouder. Hussein has one impressive educational background. He completed his high school education at King's Academy in Jordan and graduated from the prestigious Royal Military Academy Sandhurst in the United Kingdom. He also holds a degree in international history from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Hussein's commitment to learning and knowledge is evident. What sets Crown Prince Hussein apart is his dedication to making a positive impact. Through the Crown Prince Foundation, he has launched numerous initiatives, such as a national leadership program promoting volunteerism and a NASA internship initiative that led to the development of Jordan's first satellite. In the world of diplomacy, Prince Hussein made history by becoming the youngest person ever to chair a United Nations Security Council meeting. His focus on countering extremism and promoting peace reflects his commitment to global issues. As any man, Prince Hussein has some hobbies. Binge-watching some Netflix series, however, is not among them. He mostly enjoys reading, playing football, cooking, or playing the guitar. Unlike most other Arabian princes, the Crown Prince of Jordan truly enjoys the simple pleasures in life. So no wonder Rajwa Al Saif fell in love with this Prince Charming. Indeed, he's quite the catch. However, the bride has nothing to be ashamed of herself, as you're about to see. Who is Rajwa Al Saif? The future Queen of Jordan is poised to play a significant role in the country's future. With a diverse background in architecture, a passion for cultural exchange, and an impressive lineage, Rajwa brings a unique blend of talents and experiences to the Jordan royal court. Something more, she's proof that sons marry their mothers. As Rajwa is just as educated, ambitious, and active as Hussein's mother, Queen Rania. Born on April 28, 1994, in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Rajwa is the youngest child of Saudi businessman Khalid Al Saif and Azza Al Sudairi. Her family, with ancestral ties to the Subai tribe, has a long standing history as sheikhs in the town of Attar in Sudair, Najd. Her mother is also well connected to the Saudi royal family, as she's a second cousin of the current Saudi king, Salman. That makes Rajwa the third cousin of Saudi Arabia's man in power, MBS. The future queen completed her secondary education in Saudi Arabia before embarking on an academic journey that took her to the United States. Rajwa pursued her passion for architecture at Syracuse University in New York, where she obtained a bachelor's degree in 2017. During her time at Syracuse, she organized a symposium on startups in the desert showcasing her dedication to fostering innovation in the field. Later, she expanded her creative horizons by obtaining an AA degree in visual communications from the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in Los Angeles in 2019. Rajwa's love for architecture led her to work at esteemed firms such as Patterns in Los Angeles, where she honed her skills and contributed to noteworthy projects. 
Displaying her commitment to her home country, she returned to Riyadh and joined the Design Lab Experience Design Studio, bringing her international expertise to the local architectural scene. Beyond her architectural pursuits, Rajwa is an accomplished equestrian, finding solace and joy in horseback riding. Additionally, she possesses a talent for drawing and handmade art, allowing her creativity to flourish. Rajwa's linguistic abilities are equally impressive, as she effortlessly communicates in English, French and her native Arabic. No wonder she and the prince clicked instantly. But how did they meet? How the royal couple met? If this was happening two centuries ago, Rajwa would have been taken to the Jordan royal court and would have been forced to marry a guy she had never met just to solidify an alliance. However, this wouldn't have made their story so gosh darn heartwarming. Actually, Hussein and Rajwa met just like regular people do through a friend. It's truly sweet how humbly the Jordan Crown Prince describes it all. I met Rajwa through an old friend from school. I consider myself lucky because it's not every day you meet someone like Rajwa. The future King of Jordan said recently in front of Vogue Arabia. So if you thought that Disney made up all these love stories that poison our brains daily, here's the proof they actually happen. It seems Hussein was truly smitten by his now wife as he hurried up, and as Beyonce would put it, he liked it, so he put a ring on it. Engagement Though both the Crown Prince and his lovely wife are forward-thinking modern people, Hussein took the traditional approach when he asked for Rajwa's hand. It happened at the Al Saif house in Saudi Arabia, where, in an official ceremony, the couple was engaged. The showstopper at this event, without a doubt, was the pear-cut diamond Harry Winston engagement ring. Though the official price of the ring was never disclosed, the brand is well known for selling one of the most expensive engagement rings in the world, often costing more than one million dollars. For the engagement ceremony, the future princess wore an embroidered abaya from the Lebanese brand Orient 499, with a bronze belt borrowed from Hussein's mother, Queen Rania. The queen also lent her future daughter-in-law a pair of white gold and yellow diamond Stephen Webster earrings for one of the engagement portraits. The jewelry was worth nearly $100,000, as the earrings alone cost approximately $70,000. The euphoria was only solidified by the official logo of the wedding, which incorporated the Arabic characters for We Rejoice. And oh boy, did they rejoice. One only needs to look at the pre-wedding celebrations to feel the grandeur and luxury of the entire event. Pre-Wedding Celebration As with all high-profile Arabian weddings, the celebrations began long before the actual matrimony. Ten days before the wedding, on May 22nd, Queen Rania hosted a henna party for her future daughter-in-law. A henna party, also known as a Mendi ceremony, is a traditional pre-wedding celebration in many cultures, particularly in South Asia and the Middle East. The party revolves around the application of henna, a traditional dye made from the henna plant, on the bride's hands and feet, as well as on the hands of female relatives and friends. Henna parties are joyful occasions, filled with music, dancing and traditional rituals. Rajwa's henna party was held in the pristine Madareb Bani Hashem, where the bride-to-be looked simply radiant in her bespoke Honeda Serafi designer dress. Female members of both families attended the event, and they enjoyed enchanting performances by renowned artists like Nida Shrara, Diana Karazan, and Zayn Awad. The Halim Musical Group, All Salt Girls Band, and Misk Dance Company further added to the celebratory atmosphere. During her speech at the henna party, Queen Rania expressed her joy and gratitude for the union of Prince Hussein and Rajwa. She spoke warmly of Rajwa, saying she was the perfect answer to her prayers for her son. Meanwhile, the people of Jordan were not left out of the festivities. Thousands of young Jordanians attended a free tribute concert titled We Rejoice in Hussein at Amman International Stadium. Prominent Arab musicians, including Tamer Hosni, Ahmed Saad, Raghab Alama, Zayn Awad, and Diana Karazan performed at the concert as a gift to the citizens of Jordan. The concert showcased the deep bond between the royal family and the people. The night before the wedding, 
King Abdullah II hosted a banquet at Madareb Bani Hashem, attended by over 4,000 male guests. The event celebrated Jordan's rich culture, bringing together high-ranking officials, business and military figures, and representatives from various sectors of Jordanian society. It was a testament to the unity and pride of the Hashemite Arab rulers. Or it might have been a plot for a new hangover movie. But you know, what happens in Amman stays in Amman. The pre-wedding celebrations leading up to the union of Prince Hussein and Rajwa were indeed a time of joy, love and unity. More importantly, they were a glorious display of how ultra-rich people should get married. If you ever struggle to spend about $3 million in just a few days, you can ask the Jordan royal family for tips. They obviously can do it in style. And that was just the appetizer. The main event was truly mind-blowing. The Venue Such a lavish wedding deserves one truly opulent venue. For Prince Hussein and Princess Rajwa's wedding, this was not hard to book as the Jordan royal family hosted the event at the gorgeous multi-million dollar Zaran Palace. The name definitely fits this opulent architectural masterpiece. As translated from Arabic, Zaran means blooming flower. This lavish palace was once home to the legendary queen mother, Zayn. After her passing, however, the family retained the palace as a ceremonial ground, where both Hussein's father and grandfather have also tied the knot. The palace was built in 1957 as the fourth royal residence in Amman, after Ragadan, the Little Palace, and Basman. What separated it from the rest was the astounding green landscapes and its location. In the diplomatic quarters of Jordan's capital, the building itself is a masterpiece with two iconic columns that greet everyone who enters through the vast porch. And during the Crown Prince's wedding, there were undoubtedly a lot of powerful people and guests who entered through these breathtaking doors. The Guests When there is a royal wedding, you'd expect to see a ton of kings, queens, princes and princesses, as well as other dignitaries, politicians and influential people. However, Crown Prince Hussein's wedding took that to a whole new level. The event gathered the who's who of world royalties, as more than 20 royal houses from around the world attended this glorious event. This shows Jordan's position as a mediator across the globe. Some houses that have long since lost their crowns, like the Bulgarian Tsar, the Greek and Roman kings, and the Empress Farah of Iran, were also present, as well as high-level politicians from countries around the world. Among them, the First Lady of the United States, Jill Biden, and Ashley Biden, accompanied by Nancy Pelosi, definitely got the spotlight. However, Dr. Biden didn't manage to shine with an extravagant dress, as she wore her light purple Reem Acra gown, worth approximately $5,000, which she wore to a state dinner in April. Well, I get it. If I spend five grand on a dress, I will wear it more than once as well, especially if it's a Reem Acra. Despite the noble presence of some extravagant royalties, like the King and Queen of Bhutan, the Crown Prince of Bahrain, and the King of Brunei, who hopefully didn't rock a $20,000 haircut this time around, the guest list focused mainly on the younger generation of royalties. The highly popular Prince Martin of Brunei was, of course, the center of attention, as he almost stole the spotlight from the groom. Princess Tsukuko of Takamado, accompanied by her mother, Princess Hisako, was seen wearing a gorgeous green dress with a stylish designer bag and stunning earrings. Princess Elizabeth of Belgium seems to have embraced the Barbie core summer style as she wore a poison pink gown with matching shoes and bag. Princess Victoria of Sweden, accompanied by Prince Daniel, betted on floral motives for her dress, and she simply looked radiant. Of course, the true showstopper was the surprise attendance by Britain's Crown Prince and Kate Middleton, who, let's be honest, sets the bar when it comes to fashion. Middleton chose to wear a stunning blush pink gown with an elegant sweeping skirt. The dress, originally a captivating piece from Elie Saab's Fall Winter 2017 collection, underwent alterations to enhance its presentable appearance. She opted to remove the sheer panels and belt, refining the dress to suit her personal style. None of the guests, however, 
could come even close to the happy couple in terms of attire. The Prince Attire Crown Prince Hussein's attire was simply breathtaking. It was neither flashy nor expensive, though the modest look definitely complemented the bride's enchanting look. The prince was dressed in full military regalia. His black uniform nodded to his duties as a captain of the Jordan Armed Forces Arab Army, while paying homage to his father, King Abdullah II's own wedding ensemble. The modesty of Prince Hussein's suit lay not so much in how covered up he was, nor by the price of the attire. Instead, it symbolized the future king's humble service to his country. And while the prince's attire was modest, the queen-to-be was definitely going for a royal look. The Bride Rajwa Al Saif's wedding gown was a true masterpiece befitting the grandeur of the occasion. Created by the renowned fashion house Eli Saab, this horticulture creation was a testament to exquisite craftsmanship and attention to detail. Crafted using luxurious crepe fabric, the gown was a labor of love, requiring the expertise of 20 skilled artisans and an impressive three months to complete. The gown was far from ordinary, capturing the imagination with its breathtaking design, adorned with an astounding 550 meticulously crafted petals. It emanated a sense of ethereal beauty. The intricate embellishments included a dazzling array of pearls, crystals, and beads, weighing a remarkable 6 kilograms. Each shimmering element added a touch of opulence and radiance, elevating the gown into a work of art. Every stitch and embellishment showcased the skillful artistry and dedication that went into creating this magnificent gown. It was a true testament to the couturier's commitment to excellence and their ability to transform fabric into a vision of pure elegance. Rajwa Al Saif's choice of this Eli Saab creation not only showcased her impeccable taste, but also made a powerful statement about the significance of the occasion. The gown symbolized the grand celebration and the union of two families, radiating beauty, grace, and the timeless allure of horticulture. Princess Rajwa accessorized her wedding gown with a trailing veil, U-shaped chandelier earrings, and a diamond tiara. The tiara, featuring Arabic script, added a touch of grandeur and cultural significance. Her choice of d'Orsay style flats was a practical and stylish decision, ensuring comfort during the ceremony. For the evening reception at Al Husseinia Palace, Princess Rajwa opted for a second gown, this time a custom creation by Dolce & Gabbana. Paired with white opera gloves and an exquisite updo, she exuded sophistication and grace. The evening gown showcased her fashion versatility while maintaining a sense of opulence. Throughout the celebrations, Princess Rajwa's attention to detail was evident. From her porcelain-colored flower bouquet to her glitzy diamond earrings, she radiated elegance and grace. Her choice of designers, Eli Saab and Dolce & Gabbana, demonstrated her impeccable taste in fashion. So, if the ceremony wasn't this flashy, one could easily spend the entire two hours just staring at the bride. Still, while the ceremony was humble enough, it was definitely worth seeing. The Ceremony The wedding ceremony at Zaran Palace was a grand and elegant affair. Filled with traditional and symbolic elements, the celebration began with the arrival of the King and Queen, accompanied by the Jordanian Armed Forces musical band, setting the stage for a regal event. Crown Prince Hussein made his entrance, meeting his parents in the ceremony gazebo within the palace garden. If that sounds like a grand entrance, wait until you see how the bride came to the venue. Rajwa, accompanied by Hussein's younger siblings, Princess Iman, Princess Salma, and Prince Hashem, arrived at the palace in a custom 1968 Rolls-Royce Phantom. This vintage automotive masterpiece is worth more than half a million dollars and has become a symbol of nobility and royalty in the Arab world. Quite the fitting entrance, if you ask me. The ceremony, known as Katab Katab, was officiated by Dr. Ahmed al Khalila, Imam of the Royal Hashemite Court. The ceremony was short but sweet, 
Crown Prince Hussein and Rajwa signed a marriage contract, witnessed by two individuals, and exchanged wedding rings. The service concluded with the joyful ululation of Zagrata, expressing happiness in Jordanian and Arab traditions. The couple sealed their union with a tender kiss on the cheek and greeted their guests before departing in a red motorcade to their reception at Al Husseinia Palace. The Procession Immediately following the ceremony, the newlyweds embarked on a procession in an open-top car, which allowed them to greet the enthusiastic crowds that had gathered to celebrate their union. The streets were filled with well-wishers eager to catch a glimpse of the couple, and the procession became a joyful spectacle. The couple traveled in a 1984 Range Rover, specially customized for the visit of Queen Elizabeth to Jordan. Adorned with flowers at the front, the car exuded elegance and sophistication. They joined the Red Motorcade, a significant symbol of national importance in Jordan. The motorcade consisted of eight red Land Rovers and 11 motorcycles, with riders donning full Jordanian military regalia and the traditional red and white checkered headdress known as the Shemar. The procession route covered six miles across the capital, and the jubilant crowds lined the streets, waving flags and cheering for the newlyweds. The streets had been adorned with photos of the couple and the Jordanian flag, adding to the festive atmosphere. The red motorcade, steeped in tradition and heritage, harkened back to the reign of King Abdullah I, the country's founder. The procession showcased the enduring cultural customs of Jordan, with horse and camel riders sometimes joining the cavalcade. Bagpipes played by the Jordan Armed Forces musical band added a touch of grandeur to the occasion. The wedding procession was a testament to the deep-rooted traditions and the profound love and admiration the people of Jordan have for their royal family. It was a spectacle that united the nation in celebration and highlighted the significance of the royal union. The Reception The wedding reception at Al Husseinia Palace was a magnificent celebration showcasing Jordan's rich cultural heritage. The grand entrance of Prince Hussein and Princess Rajwa was heralded by a vibrant Zafé musical procession filled with the rhythmic beats of drums, the melodic sound of bagpipes, and joyful singing and clapping. As they made their way to the outdoor reception courtyard, the couple passed through an arch of sabers, a symbol of honor and respect. The reception venue itself was adorned with exquisite design and decor, reflecting Jordanian tradition and craftsmanship. A handmade artisanal rug and seats welcomed the guests, while traditional Arabic coffee and the presentation of dates showcased the warmth and hospitality of Jordanian and Saudi cultures. Mesh arches inspired by the palace's architecture and the scenic beauty of Jordan's Wadi Rum created a stunning backdrop on stage. Seasonal flowers like jasmine adorned the palace archways, adding a touch of elegance. The evening reception was a feast for the senses, featuring performances by the National Orchestra, local and regional singers, a choir, Jordanian bands, and dance troops. Guests were treated to the captivating Dabka dance and a mesmerizing performance by a Circassian group. The atmosphere was filled with music, laughter, and joy as the newlyweds took center stage. To culminate the fairy tale evening, Prince Hussein and Princess Rajwa cut their towering wedding cake adorned with blue flowers, using a sword as a symbol of unity. The sky erupted in a breathtaking display of fireworks, painting the night with vibrant colors and creating an enchanting ambiance. The wedding reception was a true celebration of love, tradition, and unity as guests from near and far came together to honor the union of Prince Hussein and Princess Rajwa. It was a night to remember, filled with cultural splendor and the joyous spirit of the Jordanian people. And while there's no doubt this was one of the most lavish weddings of the decade, it can barely compare to the extravagant and ultra-expensive wedding of Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum of Dubai. Care to learn more about this ultra-luxurious event that cost nearly $137 million?